in this video tutorial we're going to um, start using Unreal Engine um, just to um, start students off in order to open Unreal Engine you need to go to start and search for Epic and that will give you the games launcher once you open up uh, the Epic games launcher you do not need to um, uh, sign in you can always just go offline and say uh, continue so you don't have to um, sign in if you don't want to do that um, once you go offline then it will give you the option to launch the engine if you don't see that you might be seeing something like this so click on the Unreal Engine icon and then launch the um, game engine uh, once you click on launch game engine you should see this little bar that will come up and it will um, start uh, loading up the engine you want to make sure that you have some at least empty space on your hard drive you cannot save your project on uh, the server um, so you have to do that on the local hard drive which which is why you need to use um, the same computer for your project um, in this case I have 25 gigabytes of free space which is good you want to make sure that at least you have two three gigs <coughs> and in the new projects panel in this case I'm going to create a third person character game so it's a template and I want to make sure that start the content is checked I don't want no sort of content I do want to start with content what you want to do is you want to um, click on the three dots go into computer so usually it looks like this you can expand um, go to computer C drive make sure this is highlighted click on this and add a folder this folder could be your name so in this case for example I could put Ali uh, and you know just leave it as that actually and then in there that's where your projects are going to be and then you can name this for example Ali project and you can say create project um, once you click on create project the um, window you, you saw goes away and install Canton again and uh, it will create your project now what you will see uh, in just a second is going to be a pre-built level that um, Unreal or Epic has made and um, what you should have you should have a character like this okay so we have a character we have a bunch of uh, uh, stairs etc okay and if you press play it goes into uh, the play mode and you can run around and uh, uh, jump etc so you do have that sort of privilege now this is a very small um, area to work with. What I want to do is I want to create our own level. Um, first we want to go ahead and create a folder so whatever we make goes into that folder. You want to make sure you click on the contents folder and then over here we're going to right click say new folder and you want to put your name in there for example Ali in this case. Now this is where we're going to put all of our um, assets so we can see that the folder that I just named with, with, with my name um, is in the contents folder. I want to go to file new level and I want to choose a default one because it's already lit and it has a bunch of lights in there. If I hit play I can play the game but of course this is a very small area so I cannot do much with this. So what we want to do is we want to extend the um, area that we are playing with. So I want to select the box and over here on the details panel making sure that this is selected on the scale of X I want to put 10, Y I want to put 10, Z I don't want to change the value of that because Z is the um, axis that runs upwards, you can also see that here. Um, so we don't want to affect the thickness of the floor. So now if I hit play, there is a good amount of space for me to run around and um, uh, play with this. Now because we chose third person um, template, if I go to the third person folder here, I can go to blueprints and open his up his blueprints. I just want to talk about how blueprints work in a second. Um, when you open a blueprint, you will have uh, the three tabs of viewports, construction scripts, and event graphs. In the viewport, that's where you see um, the character, and the character comes with a capsule component, which is responsible for the collision of the character. You have an arrow component, which points towards the direction that the character is facing. You have the mesh itself, which is the character and the texture that goes with that. Then you have a camera boom that uh, um, works as the camera stick, and then you have the camera itself, 
What we also have is the character movements. The character movement component is responsible for uh, certain presets such as the gravity, uh, where is the um, max walk speed. We're going to be altering this in a second. And remember what this is. This max walk speed is in character movements and it's within this blueprint called third person character. Construction script we'll talk about later on. Then there's the event graph which allows the logic of the game to take place and you can calculate the logic here and you can talk to the engine and uh, you could uh, tell it to do things. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a pickup which will change the speed of a character every time the um, the character uh, collides with the with the object. I want to go into the folder that I just made called Ali and I'm going to create another folder inside there. I'm going to call this pickup. You can name it anything you want, it's not a problem, as long as you make sure that number one, you remember the names you put, number two, do not put spaces um, within your names. If you want to, you could put um, uh, capital cases, you could put underscore, but do not put spaces. Now within this pickup folder, I want to right click, say blueprint class, and we have actors, pawn, character, play control, game mode, etc. And it actually tells you what they are. Uh, basically. We could pretty much say all of these are actors, or most of them are actors. Um, and actors are objects that can be placed or spawned within the world. Um, pawns are a pop, are um, a subcategory of actors that can be possessed. For example, a character in the vehicles. Then you have character, which is a um, subcategory of a pawn, which can be possessed, and it includes the ability to, for example, walk around, jump, etc. What we want in this case, we just want an actor. And I want to name this speed boost. Okay. And I want to double click it to open it. Now, what it's really doing is it's creating a different window for this. But what I like to have is I like to have these tabs right next to each other so I can jump between my level and um, my blueprint. Now, this is an empty blueprint. Blueprints are made out of uh, component. So I want to go to add component and I want to put a scene component. The scene component is pretty much an empty component which you can use as a root component. Actually you might not always need to do that because in some versions of, depending on the version of UDK um, Unreal that you're using, sometimes a scene component um, comes with default, sometimes you need to create it. This is just out of habit, you really don't need to do that if you're using um, 4.8. If you're using 4.7, which I think is what we have in the classrooms, you probably want to use uh, add component, create the scene, and then name it to root. And then what I want to do is go to add component, and I want to type in static mesh. And this is the actual thing that we are going to see. So I'm going to leave the static mesh there. I'm going to click off it and then click here again, and then go to the menu of static mesh, and I'm going to search for, for example, uh, a chair. Uh, this is where the starter content comes in handy because we get some pre-made assets that come with it. Now we have the chair. The idea is that we are going to run and this chair is supposed to make us speed up. We do not want to uh, hit the chair and be stopped. So for that reason, the collision preset is already set to block all dynamics. I just want to set that to no collision so it does not collide with any object. What I also want to do next is put a box collision. The box collision is a component which will be responsible to know whether or not our character has um, collided with this or not. So I want to make the box slightly, oops, that's a little bit too big, slightly bigger than the chair itself, making sure that it covers the entire chair. Now what I'm going to do, I am done with the visual side of this. I mean, if I wanted to make it look a little bit better, I could put a rotating movement component in there and you might not see much happening right now but you have to press simulate and then you will see that it's turning your your actor if you're not happy with the speed of that you can always click on rotating movement and over here you can change your yaw pitch roll control so if I set that to let's say for example 90 and simulate that that will turn much slower make sure every time you you're done simulating or playing make sure you stop them before you move on to another section so in the event graph, I want to remove everything. So what we're going to say is, I want to select the box, the collision box, and I want to say, 
whenever something goes inside the box something ha needs to happen and that's an event so I want to select the collision box on the right hand side I want to scroll all the way down and I'm going to choose on component begin overlap and click the plus sign next to it and then it says on component begin overlap box it says box because that's named box if I was to change the name of that to anything that name would come here but I will leave it as box for now now there are many objects that could go inside the collision box and trigger this so we don't want all objects that go into the box to do something we want our character specifically to be the one that triggers this so once an object goes inside it this is going to check to see whether or not um, the object that just went through it is us and remember our character is called uh, if I go to the third person blueprint our character is called third person character that's the name of the blueprint okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from the other active blue, uh, pin not from the white one you could drag from the white one as well but it's easier from the blue pin from other act I'm going to drag out and I'm going to search for third person and it just brings it up character so it's casting to the third person character it's checking to see whether or not the object that just overlapped the collision box is our character now we want to affect the max walk speed remember where max walk speed is the max walk speed is in the third person character's blueprint it's in the character's movement and there it is so third person character character movement if I was to just right click here and say max walk speed I get nothing because this is the speed boost blueprint the max walk speed exists in the ca uh, third person characters blueprint if I drag from this and say max walk speed again I get nothing the reason for that is because the max walk speed exists within the component called uh, character movement so I'm gonna drag from the blueprint and search for character movement now it gives you a big list you might need to scroll all the way to the end and then get character movement and now from this pin I can get max walk speed and it gives me two options it gives me the crouch and it gives me the normal one and we're gonna ignore the crouch for now um, so we have um, get and we have set get is when we want to get the information of what the max walk walk speed is set is when we want to change the value of max walk speed in this case we're going to set the max walk speed value and we want to make sure that this white pin continues otherwise this will not fire off and I'm going to compile this and I'm gonna go ahead and go to the folder that I just had and click and drag this and put it inside the level now I want to make sure that I do not put this exactly where the character is um, or the character play start is which is this one because that would just um, activate the uh, blueprint as soon as the game begins so I want to have some distance there so I want to press play and I'm running around right now and there's the chair there which is um, just rotating for itself there I'm getting um, a low FPS that's because I'm also recording the screen so apologies for that um, right now if I was to walk into the chair I would completely stop this is supposed to make me go faster but it's stopping me the reason it is stopping me is because as soon as I hit the uh, the, um, the trigger box it checks to see whether it's me and if it's me it's going to set the max walk speed to zero I don't want it to be set to zero because zero means stationary it won't move I want to set it to some other value by default the max walk speed value is 600 so I want to double that up so I want to say 1200 if I compile and play so this is the speed that I have right now as soon as I hit that I will have double the speed okay if I was to go to a, a ridiculous amount like 3500 and then play the game so this is my uh, normal speed when I hit the chair the speed really increases and I can run around much much faster so that's one way of doing it but the problem with this is let me actually change this back to let's say 1200 if I compile and play the game if I go over this it sets my value uh, to 1200 but if I go over it again it does not make me any faster the reason for that is every time I go over it it's trying to set the value to um, 1200 and it already is 1200 so we don't see any sort of uh, uh, increase in the character's speed so what we're going to do is do a bit of mathematical calculation very simple and very easy 
remember where we got max walk speed from we got it from the character movement that's where the pin is going there I want to drag a pin out from here and rather than saying set max walk speed I'm gonna say get max walk speed okay so I'm gonna get whatever the max walk speed is I want to drag a pin out and I want to say plus let's say 600 which means we're doubling the speed up and then the result of this becomes a max walk speed so we're not setting max walk speed to a certain value like like 1200 we're getting whatever the value is and adding 600 to it so the first time we go on it max walk speed is going to be 600 and we add another 600 to it and we set the new max walk speed the second time we go on it we're going to get value of 1200 and add 600 to it the next time we go on it it does the same it gets a value of um, 1800 and adds 600 to it so now if I was to compile and play this the first time increases my uh, my speed a little bit second time increases a bit more third time increases a bit more fourth time even more up to a point that it becomes difficult to control it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the third person's blueprint which is I'm going to go into the third person's folder I'm going to go to blueprints I'm going to go to third person character and what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to go ahead right click and say event tick event tick runs on every tick meaning on every frame so on every frame I'm going to print out the speed of my character I want to drag from the white pin and I'm going to say uh, print string as soon as I type print string will come out so what I'm going to do now is get the character's movement and through character movement component that we just got from here I want to say get max walk speed and then I want to get this blue pin put it into the uh, purple pin and this should as soon as we play the game render out our speed which is you can see on the uh, left hand side of the screen it says 600 if I go on it it will say 1200 if I go on it again it says 1800 2400 3000 3600 and so on and so forth okay so in case if you want to check to see whether or not it's making that changes there this is how you would do that I'm going to delete that because I don't want to see that now what we are doing with this blueprint is that with, if I go back to the pickup folder that we made what we're doing with this blueprint is we are adding this blueprint ourselves manually what I could do I could add multiple blueprints but what I could go to the blueprint and say in my speed boost is get the max walk speed add 600 to it set the new max walk speed and once you've done that destroy this destroy actor which is that meaning that once you've done this destroy yourself and remove yourself from the game so now if I hit the chair it increases my speed and it removes itself so if I had multiple chairs inside the game and I was to play this I could pick those up and they would disappear I think I just missed one very good <clears throat> so we'll leave this as it is for now for in the next video tutorial I will explain how we can possibly um, turn these uh, um, actors to spawn inside the game so rather than us placing it manually we can randomly spawn them within an area of the game so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial